Hey guys, welcome back to another board game battle. The show in which we're going to be competing two gamers against each other here on the channel. It is a new series and it's the second one in the series. We'll be talking about Thanos Rising versus Dragon Ball Z Perfect Cell. Two games here that basically have a very similar theme in nature and a similar style and mechanics in which you're rolling dice to fight against big scary bad guys. In the game Thanos Rising, you're basically going to be competing against Thanos as he tries to destroy the world, destroying your, your, your characters along with the characters on the board, and of course trying to gather the Infinity Gauntlet, or as you're playing with Dragon Ball Z, you're going to be playing as one of the many Dragon Ball Z characters trying to fight against Perfect Cell, who is basically trying to rule the world. Both games share similar qualities, but are different and unique in their own ways. We're going to go ahead and show you all five of our categories, and you can determine for yourself which one is the best, as well as hearing about what I think is the best compared to these two games by IDW and by USAopoly Art. Let's go ahead and take a look at both of the games and what we think about them. All right, so here we are at Board Game Battles, showing you off Dragon Ball Z Perfect Cell and Avengers Infinity War. Thanos Rising. Both games are comparable in a lot of different ways and different qualities and styles. We're going to try and nitpick each one of them down into the five categories I previously talked about, and we're also going to just go ahead and bust into it. I actually have to have my little handy dandy clipboard for this one because I not only talked to myself, but the people who played with us to so determine the scores based on the different categories. Aesthetics, theme, quality, gameplay, and fun, and then our overall interpretation of the games. So let's go ahead and get started with aesthetics for pleasing to the eye. As you look at Thanos Rising and Dragon Ball Z, you can see they have an interesting appeal to them. They both have individual um, styles of artwork where he has these are more picture style artwork, and then this kind of has a little bit of a lacking artwork, I would say. But what is there is nice. If you've got um, the, an interest in animation, this is going to be nicely appealing to you. And if you've got an interest in the style of the uh, Avengers Infinity War movies, this one's going to be appealing to you. This one has a lot more colors. It has a lot more going on. Overall, it may either feel cluttered or it might just be a nice mix. It depends on the person, I would suppose. This one here is more condensed, but it has that streamlined feel to it. It has that beautiful coloration of the green showing perfect cell. And of course, all of the different Dragon Ball Z characters along with all their abilities and whatnot, and Perfect Cell's abilities. It all fits nice and tight onto the board. So with that one, we gave it a style of a 4 out of 5 for the aesthetics for uh, Thanos Rising and a 3.5 for Dragon Ball Z. Next, we come up with the themes of the game. We have the Avengers theme, of course, the movie's very, very popular theme right now, and Dragon Ball Z, Z a very, very popular theme since the beginning of animation almost. This has been really, really popular with all the kids, it's known in childhood, but and we look at these and we compare them to the theme represented in the movies, represented in the animation, what do we feel? Well, with this, it does an amazing job. You do feel, not only in gameplay, but in style, that Thanos is rising uh, to power, and you have to stop him from getting all of the Infinity Stones over here in the game. It shows the Infinity Stones, it shows what is needed, and it kind of even gives you an idea of how the game plays without actually uh, like without actually knowing any of the mechanics. You know that these things are going to go onto that, onto that fist in some way, and you have to try and stop that. You've got bad guys over here and good guys, so you know that you're going to either try and help them or acquire them in some way, and they have to defeat the bad guys. And then, of course, Thanos is here, which actually plays a role in the game as far as the fact that he moves around the board, demonstrating his power and utilizing his lackeys to do his will for him. Uh, it has a wonderful, wonderful theme. This theme really, really comes out in this game, and I have almost nothing to say nitpicky regarding how the theme carried out in Avengers Infinity War Thanos Rising. What about Dragon Ball Z Perfect Cell? Well, in this specific game, there is not a lot I can say negative as well. Both uh, games do an excellent job. This one here, you fight, feel like you're fighting against Perfect Cell. You have his life bar over here. This is the damage you're trying to do to him. These are the attacks that he is doing to you guys. As for each role, uh, you have the dice for each character, and of course the Dragon Ball, where you're trying to make wishes. These Dragon Balls here help you, and these uh, these little uh, beans here are your health. The characters, everything feels right. You are fighting against a big baddie in this one. You are fighting against a big baddie in this one. Uh, both of these, in my opinion as well as the others I've talked to rate this a five out of five for both of the games as far as theme goes and I agree completely they both feel 
really, really nicely when you're playing them as far as the theme. All right, so moving on to the quality of the games. Well, you can basically see the quality for yourself, but what you can't do is feel it. Uh, with Thanos Rising, the cards are nice quality cards. I don't feel like they're going to have a lot of wear and tear on them if you play with them a lot, provided you're, you know, the same as any other average card game. Even these are nice and thick. The die are nice. They're engraved dice. The cubes here are utilized for health and, of course, to gain the Infinity Stones. They're They're average cubes uh, and then of course you have your average gems with the different colors which are also nice uh these you got these little pieces of cardboard they're nice as well and uh yeah everything works well even the uh this this figure is really nice he's thick too and he's heavy which is nice as well this is thick so all in all the box as well the quality of the box is very nice this is excellent quality five out of five in my opinion uh there's not a lot of games that even show this amount of quality and even the box inside here has a nice way of putting everything back okay let's talk about dragon ball z now over here the dice are also engraved and thick and nice to hold they feel good to roll these are nice thick pieces uh for your hp these things they're not too bad they're i guess a little thinner than i would normally like for a player board but they do get the job done uh, these actually i can see that the thickness they're the same thickness as the player boards i see these as a positive the board itself is very nice and i guess these are also in the same th thinness as the player boards maybe a little thicker would have been nice but not too too shabby at all the box quality is nice as well IDW and USAopoly both do amazing jobs when it comes to the quality of their games. This one doesn't have an insert in it, it's just a basic box with the sides. But overall, nice quality. Five over here, and I would say a 4.5 respectively over here for Dragon Ball Z Perfect Cell. All right, moving on to the gameplay. Gameplay being probably the most important thing in my opinion next to the next category. It's real close up there. But with gameplay in this one, you are rolling die trying to acquire heroes. You're trying to defeat baddies. And if you can defeat enough baddies before Thanos does one of three things, either defeating a team, uh, gaining the Infinity Gauntlet, or uh, there's some other things that can happen in the game. But nevertheless, he has, he's trying to achieve his, his goal. You're trying to achieve yours. You have your player boards that you can utilize. Uh, you'll gain your dice. You'll be rolling them. Uh, the different character oh 10 characters with 10 characters die on the good guy's side there that which almost never happens uh he win the other two ways before that uh but nevertheless it, it works really well it, it doesn't feel weird to me uh the gameplay what i can say is that it's slightly more randomized than um i was going to expect some of these guys are easier to get and some are more difficult like the hulk and whatnot and the Hulk has a lot of health and he's hard to get, so he'll stay on the board for a long time. And usually I want the board to be changing so I can pick up new characters, especially since the Hulk is very difficult to get. There, that can happen where a lot of guys come out that are difficult to get or difficult to defeat, and it makes the game a little more challenging. It has uh, random spikes of difficulty throughout the entire game, so you never know uh, what the game's going to throw at you or how easy it is going to be. The die are going to roll randomly and he could do some really nasty things or practically nothing. Turning these things over means the game is progressing longer than it probably should. And whenever these roll on a die, uh, basically the infinity uh, stone powers are going to be activated. They're very, very, very powerful. Um, so if you like spiky games where you think you're doing well and all of a sudden, oh no, it's more difficult. Or you're, you're doing really poorly and all of a sudden you get a really nice character that gives you bonus dice and whatnot. This is going to have that style of gameplay. We're on the alternative. You're going to have a Dragon Ball Z, which is going to be a game that's going to give you more agency not as much to do in something like thanos rising where you're going to get to place your character you get to choose what space you want to go to you get to choose what character you want to try and gain uh and of course what abilities you're going to use and when you want to use them with this one you're mainly going to be rolling dice attempting to do damage or attempting to stop damage being taken from you as well as the option to pass die to your uh your next ally which will give them more likely uh more likelihood of succeeding where you may have failed you always have a specific thing you're going for. The game has very low spikes in, in danger. There are certain ones that are more difficult to get than others. You need these three specific ones, where as opposed to these are three random ones. But it's not nearly as spiky as this one. You don't have as much choice in the game as far as what you really want to do, but there is enough choice in this game to where it's not that big of a deal. You can choose to fight these. You can gain these Dragon Balls here. You can choose to heal yourself. And, of course, these specific abilities that you gain throughout the game will increase your abilities to do certain things. It has a little less 
less in this one, but it, it, it makes up for it in the fact that the game is going to be always difficult or always easy depending on the choice of difficulty you make. You can choose at the beginning of the game how difficult you might want to make this game, and it can be near impossible or it can be as easy as you so choose, but it's always fun and always, almost always comes down to the wire. In this one, you can lose, you can tell that you've lost in probably four or five specific rounds. Uh, this one you never really know. You think you're doing well, you think you're doing poorly, uh, and it's always like that last second, you know, where it comes down to it. So gameplay is a poop shoot, so you guys can decide for yourself. Both of them are fun in their own unique ways. And the last thing is fun. Fun is a category for me because it is the most important thing. Am I having fun playing the game? It could be a terrible game, but if I'm having fun, that is what matters. And sometimes that has to do with the people in your group. So take this with a grain of salt because maybe the people in your group would make these games not fun for you. And if that's the case, you should consider uh, whether you think this game would be a good fit for you. But for us, uh, both of these games are incredibly enjoyable. This one, like I said, it's, it's difficulty spiking, and this one is difficulty uh, progressive throughout the entire game until the very end, which is down to the wire. Uh, the fun also comes into knowing what characters you want to get, how you want to build your team up. Uh, I want to get all of Star-Lord's crew, or I want to gain all the different ships in the game. I want to be the guy who fights the bad guys. I want to make sure that the boss isn't going to get the Infinity Stones. And you can put yourself into the theme, put yourself into the game, and change the way the game plays based on what the choices you make in this game. In this game, the fun revolves around working together. It's a lot more cooperative in nature. They're both cooperative games fully, but for this, this for some reason, this one feels more cooperative, and that gives a lot of fun as well. I want to help my teammate. I want to give him more die, especially if what I'm not what I'm doing is not going to help us as much as what he would be doing. I also have to make sure about my health, but he's going to make sure about mine as well. This one has that in it. Don't get me wrong, but this one shares a little more with that and gives you the ability to give a little more help throughout the game, and how you want to deal with Cell, because as he continues to get more and more powerful, he gains more and more traction and makes the game almost impossible if you do not work together and deal with him. Uh, both games have these bonuses, which are super fun. I do enjoy the aspect of having these pieces and utilizing them, giving them to your, them to your opponents if you can just necessarily do that. Uh, but both games, like I said, are so enjoyable. Uh, both, in my opinion, are fun is a 5 out of 5. I'd play these games anytime if asked, no questions, hands down, and they have just enough players, two to four players, for a cooperative dice rolling game that I would enjoy. Both of them involve a little bit of randomness as far as the die rolling goes, but overall super fun okay so the last thing is overall well what do i think about the game dragon ball z and thanos rising overall well as you can probably guess this is a is very very close battle okay and it's so close that there's going to be more than one winner for the different people i'm going to be talking about but for me specifically thanos rising takes it by just a hair honestly just a hair and the reason is because of the choice it gives you as opposed to dragon ball z's uh amount of choice. Now, that's not to say that there's not a lot of choice in this game. There is. You do have a lot of options as far as how you roll and the abilities you gain, but this one, for me, and I like games that have a lot of things going on, this one has more of that. For you guys who are probably not as interested in the complexity of when you want to roll dice, how you want to roll dice, where you want to play certain things, this one would be your solid choice. It gives you the main options you need, it gives you the different things you have to deal with, and then how you want to share and help with your, uh, with your allies. And this one, you feel a little more, more Lone Shark. You can kind of win the game all on your own with your other teammates kind of just helping a little bit. And I like that. In my last game I played, I totally dominated this game, and I basically carried my teammates to victory. I enjoy that. In this one, it's not likely that you can do that on your own in this one. You need to have everyone help and work together in order to succeed in this game. And so that's why, for me specifically, this one takes the cake. However, my cameraman, or person you probably know behind the camera, Grant, he is more in tune with Dragon Ball Z. And that probably has to do with not only the theme of the game, but I would also say the mechanical nature of the game. And that's not to say it's a bad thing, but to say that it's always going to be a close game. You're never going to see those nasty spikes in damage or in the boss's difficulty. And you're always going to have an equal turn with everybody else uh, progressing through the game. Uh, for you guys, I think most of you guys will probably think based on my review here or my explanation of the games, that it's going to come down to theme, and I'd probably, I'd probably agree with you there. If you want a more complex game that involves uh, Thanos, or if you want a little less complex game that involves Dragon Ball Z, that'll probably what it comes down to. Both games are excellent choices. I am so happy I got these games, and uh, there is some nice cool promo stuff for this one that I got to play with, which is awesome as well. 
But that's all I can pretty much say about these games. Dragon Ball Z and Avengers Infinity War Thanos Rising. It'll be up to you whether you guys want to pick up which one or not. But for me specifically, for me specifically, Thanos Rising takes the cake in this board game battle.